So you've decided to do a PhD. Well, if you don't know, check out my video on whether or not you should. But if you're here, you're probably doing research on how to do a good job, which means you're exactly the kind of person that we're looking for. I'll be speaking about the PhD application process in computer science, but I'm sure it's similar to other departments. When you're applying, keep in mind that we, as the faculty members, are trying to evaluate how successful you will be as an independent researcher. Which means that if you're able to engage in some sort of research, either helping with research or doing your own, and having somebody comment on it, you will already have a leg up in this process. So a typical application consists of a few components. The curriculum vitae, or CV. First off, find some template that's beautiful and professional looking and list the things that are pertinent. So if you wrote software or helped somebody with research, don't give that the same weight as the ice cream store that you worked when you were 15. Make it pop out. List any awards that you might have had. List anything that communicates a committed, resourceful, curious person who is unafraid of taking calculated risks. The statement of purpose. This is a key document, which also serves as a writing sample. Remember that scientists, in large part, communicate their ideas through writing. Tell us what makes you prepared to do graduate school, especially speaking to research you may have done in the past. Why do you want to pursue the chosen field of study? What questions that our faculty members are currently working on excite you? And why? And what do you plan to do with your degree? So remember, be concise. Often, less is more. This document involves soul searching. So start early and get somebody who's fluent to help you and, and help you revise them and make it immediately gripping for somebody who has to read hundreds of these. This document takes three times longer to write than you expect, even when you know that it takes three times longer than you expect. If you have self-doubt seeping in, I'm not going to apply, I'm not good enough. Most people I met in graduate school had, and myself included, had some form of imposter syndrome. We had that self-doubt as well. Just don't let it get to you. Your portfolio. Many places will let you submit papers that you've authored or manuscripts you've done, technical reports or theses. And we'll definitely look at those to see the quality that you put into them. So a high quality document of there will win many marks. The notorious GRE or graduate record examination. These are becoming less significant, which is fortunate because they're actually fairly poor predictors of success. In practice, a solid score will be met with a nod and a low score will be met with a question mark. If you didn't bother putting in the effort to get a good score on the GRE, will you bother putting in the effort to do well in graduate school? Coursework, grades, GPA. I must admit I only glance at these because students and schools vary so much. Many good researchers didn't have perfect grades. Some warning signs include people who never took any risks or didn't seem to be expanding their minds, maybe just taking the same course repeatedly to increase their grades. There is so much to learn and there's so little time to learn it. Research involves the ability to take risks because we're operating at the boundary of human knowledge and many things won't pan out. We need to get comfortable learning to navigate in the dark. Recommendation letters. This is a central piece of your application. It's best to have recommendation letters strongly written from researchers that are established in the field and whose judgment we can trust. These letters should comment candidly on your, your personality, your ability, your grit, your perseverance, your readiness to be a researcher. And ideally by drawing comparison to somebody who has gone to graduate school. Your best shot at getting a strong recommendation letter is to have been engaged and involved in research with some strong researcher for some period of time before your application is due. That's most of the packet. So now you just have to decide where to apply. Ideally, apply for a place that has multiple faculty working in the area in which you're interested. Just like dating, you may not match with your first choice, so you don't want to be stuck. Get to know what these people are working on and mention them in your application. You should apply to multiple schools, including a couple that are above and a couple below the mark you're setting. And just remember that the ranking of the graduate school is less important than a welcoming research environment where you're going to be spending several years and the quality of the advisor who's going to be 
training you and helping you get those jobs after you graduate and become Dr. So-and-so. And finally, good luck. And even if the luck isn't good, something happens, just remember that the hallmark of successful people, the common denominator, is that when something went awry, something didn't work, something failed, they stood back up and persevered.